Okay, so again, from that Tuesday class session, the general point of the discussion is that um, more and more segments of society have been um, uh, obtained the franchise and uh, the details are important too. So you need to make sure that you're familiar with, you know, what the white primary was and what brought the white primary to an end. You need to make sure that you're familiar with the poll tax, how the poll tax came to an end, what the dual ballot system was, how that came to an end, grandfather clauses, literacy tests, all that kind of stuff. You're subject to quizzing on the next lecture quiz. Okay, but we have to we have to move on beyond that. So what we're going to be talking about today, I want to just sort of finish up with a point that we kind of left hanging in that Tuesday class meeting. Um, we were talking about the Voting Rights Act and specifically that it had two, the Voting Rights Act had two sort of components to it. The first component was that it made it a violation of federal law to use any of these tactics, any of these devices that were commonly used particularly in southern states to prevent people from voting, voting on the basis of race. Okay, again, I'm talking about things like literacy tests, you know, uh, uh, any sort of any sort of discriminatory practice. The poll taxes, of course, uh, came to an end at the federal level as a result of a constitutional amendment the year before in 1964. But states were still at, remember that states like Texas, for example, Texas and Virginia, in response to the 24th Amendment, adopted the dual ballot system. And so they were still sort of using the dual ballot system when the Voting Rights Act was in place, uh, put into place. Uh, okay, so, so the general point here is that the Voting Rights Act, Congress passes this legislation, essentially it says that the states can't use any kind of tactics that are designed to prevent people vote, from voting on the basis of race. Okay. But it's actually the second part of the Voting Rights Act that I really think is important for our purposes, and that is the so-called pre-clearance provision. Okay? And if you watch that video from Tuesday, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? That's the one, the part of the act that says any of these states that had a history, whether that is in the past or whether that was contemporaneously, like the conditions that existed in 1965, when the legislation passed. If the state had a pattern of discriminating on the basis of race when it comes to voting, then any new election laws that they create or that they want to pass have to be pre-cleared by the Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, who's headed, which is headed by the Attorney General of the United States. Okay, and what was the purpose? Who, who's watched that video from Tuesday? Just the real, okay. Kristen, do you remember what I told you that the purpose, what Congress was essentially trying to say with that part of the legislation? Like before, before the 65 Voting Rights Act, if a person believed that they had been discriminated against on the basis of race and their efforts to vote, what would they have had to do? Like, how would they get any relief from that? Well, remember we said that they would have had to have filed a lawsuit. With all that that entails, like getting lawyers and paying for lawyers and or having someone pay for lawyers, and, you know, that process is going to be an extended process, right? It could, go, it could take years, right? So what Congress is essentially saying in this legislation is we don't want to have to wait for the courts. We want to fix our society now, right? We don't have to wait for the courts and the very slow process that comes with the courts. So any of these states that we know have a pattern of discriminating or have had a pattern of discriminating, that would include Texas, right? That would include Mississippi. That would include Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, most, the southern states certainly, but others, okay, where there was a clear pattern of discrimination. When they, when they say they want to pass a new law, then it's going to have to be cleared by the justice. The Justice Department is going to have to enter a finding that it's non-discriminatory. So let me remind you that in the United States, states run elections. We don't really have national elections in the United States. Even the election for the president is not really a national election. 
That's an election that occurs in 50 different states. And if you paid attention at all to what happened in 2020, in the presidential election in the months after the 2020 election, you may already be aware of that because you know that the laws are different in Texas as opposed to Wisconsin, as opposed to Florida or whatever. Why else would former President Trump be challenging the election of the results on a state basis? Right? So that's maybe one of the le one of the lessons that you can take away from the 2020 election is that we had a system of elections, even for the president in this country, that is determined by state law. And that's consistent with the Constitution. The Constitution provides that the states are going to make the election laws. Okay. So Congress is acknowledging that in 1965, and given the fact that the states make the election laws, we are going to require by federal law that if they make a new election law, there's going to have to be a finding by the Department of Justice to pre-clear it, to say that it's not discriminatory. And that system worked pretty well for several decades. Okay? But then in 2013, the United States Supreme Court handed down its decision in this very important case, Shelby County versus Holder. There is a Shelby County, Texas, but this didn't come out of the state of Texas. It came out of Alabama, Shelby County, Alabama. And I'm going to play you a short video here. I think it runs about six or seven minutes, okay, that I think helps reinforce some of the points that I made in that Tuesday class session. Okay, so let me call this thing up. And <clears throat> before I hit play on it, I got to do one thing. So bear with me here for just a second. Because I know you don't want me to violate copyright law. So I can't really record this and put it on YouTube. Okay. So if this will ever come up, I'll do this. I'll, I'll turn off the recorder. What is going on here? Why won't this come up? Oh, just needed to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so bear with me. So how many buttons to press? Okay, so for those of you uh, in the Tuesday class meeting who will be watching this on video, I'm going to provide a link uh, to this uh, video that I'm showing in the classroom right now. <clears throat> 